It was maybe just a difference that I was not much listening to what others might say, kind of I could figure out things that um, that it is something is important and I felt always that it is important and and try to believe that it is doable and uh, and not listen to those that said not so. It is like imagine um, something that uh, I can have an RNA and I have to tell you, I did not want to develop vaccine at all. And that was the reason I was looking for with colleague Drew Weissman that how to make it non-immunogenic because everybody thought that the immunogenic RNA is good for vaccine, but I want to use a therapeutic. And I could imagine like other big names like uh, Steve Jobs that imagined that there is a something, a device, and that will be your telephone, that will be your camera, that will be your all different <laughs> device in one piece. And today we take it granted. I, I just imagine that there will be RNA we are taking out from our refrigerator and put on our wound. And, and because um, the advantage of the RNA is that taken up by the cells and locally they will produce a protein which will be beneficial, which will be therapeutic. Otherwise, if you put the protein there and it will wash away from the blood, here is also, but it is continuously produced in locally, so there you have a gradient. And I imagine that it is doable and, and it will be helpful for some kind of disease, like healing the skin. That was my first thought. And then later, when we realized that, uh, you know, not much protein is made from the RNA, thinking about what disease model could be, which uh, small amount of protein is beneficial. And finally, we ended up with uh, treating uh, anemia. And we come up with uh, messenger RNA coding for erythropoietin. And because for continuously, the erythropoietin mRNA, which we delivered to the animal, were like four days was continuously translated, we could see new red blood cells formed and we could see the hematocrit increase. So it was the RNA translated to a protein, erythropoietin, which is, stimulates red blood cell production. And it was functional. The RNA translated to a protein was functional and more red blood cells was made. And so we found at least one disease where the mRNA could be beneficial. And of course, I was working on this field where Drew Weissman tried to make a vaccine and realizing when he used once this modified nucleosin modified, which was non-immunogenic, that was many twists and turns. Turned out that this was better vaccine because the uh, original RNA everybody was using is uh, turned out uh, toxic, especially in human, and they couldn't see as well in animals. So that was also one thing that Drew Weissman used human immune cells. And we could see that, you know, the RNA, conventional RNA is inducing immune response and uh, uh, inflammation, which was, which was not good.